Hey guys, welcome back to the Ironclad Lion channel, and welcome to the training yard. This video is all about unit orders and formations. That is, using the X, C, and V commands to tell your troops to hold formation, follow, and attack. We'll be using these commands with various formations and demonstrating how we can get the most out of our units. We'll be using a handful of different units and demonstrating various formations with them. But this is not meant to be a guide on any particular unit, rather, we are demonstrating mechanics that can be applied to any unit in the game. As you can see behind me, we've got our unit of Men at Arms, which I think is an excellent example swordsman unit. To start off with, when we press X with our unit, we get them into formation. Almost every unit has a default scattered formation, which is good for general movement and avoiding heavy losses to enemy artillery. You can see on the ground the highlighted arrow which shows where an individual soldier will stand. We can use these arrows to get an idea of where our units will move to when we press X. Then by using the F keys, and in this case F2, we can switch them into a more condensed formation. A more condensed formation is generally better for combat, and for use in tighter spaces like city streets. The downside of condensed formations is that your unit becomes much more vulnerable to enemy artillery and area of effect attacks. Many units will have access to a special formation, either offensive or defensive, depending on the unit type. Our men at arms, for example, have access to a shield wall formation on our F3 key. This makes them get into a very tightly packed formation and put up a three layer shield wall which is excellent for blocking enemy arrows and musket fire. You can use such a formation to protect friendly units, protect yourself while you heal, or potentially hold a choke point. Now if we hold X instead of just tapping it, we can order our unit to move to a distant location. This can be useful to order your unit to hide behind a wall, for example, without having to go there yourself. Be advised, when ordering your unit to move this way, your hero must be stationary. There are many specialized uses for this command, as opposed to just tapping X, which will move your unit near you and face the direction of your camera. Those are the basics for the X command. Now for the C command, or follow. Tapping C once will have your units move to your position, and follow your hero wherever you move. This is useful in case you have lost track of your unit and want to keep them nearby. You can also double tap C to tell your unit to sprint to your location, which allows for faster movement, but may cause your unit to become split up if they are traveling over long distances, as each soldier will run as fast as they can to get to you, ignoring formation. Finally, we have the V, or attack command. Pressing V normally will give the order to attack at will. This will cause your units to attack the closest target to them. This order has no regards to formation, and each soldier will move and attack as they see most appropriate. You can see how the unit has spaced themselves from each other, and not every soldier is attacking. While this is inefficient, you don't need to micromanage your unit this way. I suggest only using your unit like this when you are certain your unit can safely beat the opposing unit, and when your hero is needed elsewhere. Now, we can see when our men-at-arms defeat the enemy unit, they get rather confused as to what they should do. Some of them move back to where the formation originally was, while most stay by the defeated enemy unit, thinking there may be more enemies to slay. This is where we can use the attack move command. By holding V, we can order our unit to attack anything it encounters on its way to the marker we have placed. This functions much like the regular attack command, with the key difference that your unit will move to the marker you have placed once it is done fighting. While still not the most efficient combat option, this frees up your hero to focus on other things instead of micromanaging your unit. With the basics covered, it's time to look at more advanced formation usage, and why we should use different formations in different situations. With this pike militia, let's switch them from their default spread formation and get them into line formation. This is an excellent defensive formation for covering a wide area. 
Combined with a shield unit, a line formation can hold a good chunk of ground from an enemy assault. Let's take a look at the Pike Militia's specialized formation, which puts the unit into a column. You probably wouldn't want to use this formation while out in an open field, as it leaves the unit vulnerable to flanking attacks. But in a dense, city environment, this is a much better choice than the line formation. Let's take a quick look at the differences between these formations on some more applicable terrain. Moving up the stone stairs, the pikes could very easily hold this section with a well-placed column formation. If an enemy unit tried to move up the stairs past them, this cactus is going to hurt. Now if we tried to use the line formation in the same position, you can see it spreads the unit out much too wide, with some units behind the stall or up on the stairs where they won't be effective. A better use of the line formation would be to hold the corner around the stairs. This way, more of the unit is in effective range and would heavily damage any enemy unit trying to get past. To emphasize this point, we'll switch them back to their default spread formation to show just how unfit that formation is in this environment. Great. Now let's double tap C to get them to run down to our location, then X to get them into a nice line formation. We're doing great and learning how to use our formations. There are more odd formations, like for archers. Generally speaking, the default spread formation will do an archer unit just fine. In this example, we have our prefecture archers, who can get into Wu-Tang formation. This doesn't particularly boost their combat effectiveness, but it does look pretty cool. So if aesthetics matter to you on the battlefield, you have that option. Can't forget the cavalry. Cavalry and Conqueror's Blade function very differently than standard infantry units when it comes to formations and orders. While sharing similar formations, we'll see that these formations are to be used offensively rather than defensively. Monastic Knights, in this example, have access to a spread and line formation, which are both solid choices for open ground engagements. Their specialized formation is a wedge formation, which puts them into a tightly packed triangle, ideal for urban combat and breaking enemy formations. As you can see, it takes quite a while for them to change formation, so it's best to alter the formation of cavalry while they are on the move. For combat, it's actually best if we order our cavalry to move through an enemy unit, rather than attack with the V command. The knight on top of the horse will automatically target nearby enemies, while the horse will focus on moving to the designated location. This allows the cavalry to deal a lot of damage while preventing any significant counterattack from the enemy infantry units. To maximize the effectiveness of your cavalry in the field, you should always keep them moving when around enemy units. An immobile cavalry unit is a dead cavalry unit. To show you the difference this makes, we'll tell our cavalry unit to attack at will. We'll see them charge into the enemy formation like usual, but instead of continuing through, they will stop to fight the infantry in close quarters combat. This is absolutely not how cavalry should be fighting. Each horse now does what it thinks is best, and, well, I mean, this is a mess if we're being honest. The cavalry is all over the place and would probably be dead if this were a real battle. So let's get them back into formation, and we can instantly see the difference. Enemy units are being trampled, our unit is taking much less damage, and the cavalry are moving as a nice formation again. This is crucial to using cavalry effectively. Let's put it all together now, and see how we can use formations and orders together to really make our units shine. Here, we have our pike militia braced in column formation to hold this gateway. This is great for defense, but what if we want to do more damage? We can press V to tell the unit to attack at will. But we can see that there are still plenty of pikes that can't reach the enemy. Let's try putting X and V together for this next wave of enemies. Instead of waiting for the enemy to run into our pikes, we'll take the pikes to our enemy. Once the enemy is close, we'll press X to order our pikes to move into the enemy unit, then press V and watch every one of our pikes hit at the same time. 
Within mere seconds, the enemy unit is wiped out. This exposes your unit to more potential damage than a defensive strategy, but can be used to deal with an enemy unit more quickly. Another example against a slightly more armored unit. We'll brace our pikes in column formation, then wait for the enemy to spread. We'll order our unit to move with X, then attack with V to split the enemy unit in half. We can then repeat this process to wipe out the enemy squad efficiently and in nice bite-sized pieces. That's how we can use orders and formations together effectively. But what are some things to watch out for? When we give an order, our unit will prioritize that order above anything else. Here, we've given our shield maidens the C order to follow our hero. Our shield maidens will now prioritize following us over anything else. They don't care about formation, and they don't care about attacking enemy units. This can be a huge problem if some of our soldiers get caught by the enemy, as they won't fight unless you give the order. Finally, make sure to keep your units happy and healthy. If they are significantly wounded, press control and left click the supply point icon to tell your units to heal. A good time to heal your units is when you see a gradient on the unit health bar or when you see a lot of red. We can't have a Conqueror's Blade video without some examples from the battlefield. To start off with, we have our shield maiden set up in a tight shield wall formation. This is the ideal formation in a tight space such as this. And try as they may, the enemy cannot break through. We are not only holding the enemy melee units back, but also blocking enemy javelins that get thrown. You can also see we have a group of friendly muskets who are providing fire support, while we provide the protection they need. With coordination, we repel the enemy advance and drive them back. Our next example has us defending our supply point during a field battle. I've got a couple enemy heroes on me, but I know my unit is close behind, so I stall them until they can arrive. Once in position, I order my pikes to attack at will, as formation does not matter in this situation, and I'm busy dodging the enemy hero attacks. Seeing an enemy unit approach, I quickly tell my pikes to get into a line formation to bolster their defensive abilities, and minimize damage taken. Once only a few enemy units remain, I can tell my pikes to attack at will to quickly finish off the enemy squad. After the threat is dealt with, I get my pikes healed up and ready for the next fight. We've killed several heroes and a unit of troops, with minimal losses ourselves. Cavalry formations can be crucial to how you deal with enemy units. You can actually see me cycling through the different Fire Lancer formations, deciding which to go with. Notice how I'm doing this before the unit arrives and is still on the move to my location. I settled on the double wing formation in order to charge into the ongoing battle. The double wing formation proved to be the right choice, and the Fire Lancers were able to clear out the enemy units in a single charge. Moments later, I take my Fire Lancers into the middle of the battlefield, where I spot an extremely vulnerable, tightly packed cluster of musket troops. Instead of the double wing, we'll order our Fire Lancers to get into a compact wedge before initiating the charge. A mistake by their commanding officer leads to the complete wipe of their musket squad. Not wanting to stick around to deal with angry heroes, I double tap C to order my Fire Lancers to run to me to get them out and back to the supply as quick as I can. It's also possible to trap your opponent within your unit's formation. The Condottieri Guard, for example, have a very tightly packed square formation. This allows us to trap an enemy poleaxe with the X command and block him in with no chance to escape. Always keep in mind the duality of formations. While it may seem they are mostly for defense, you can use formations for offensive maneuvers just as easily. While in a rather dense and dangerous situation, I can use my shield wall to give myself some breathing room and bandage, even while an intense battle rages just above me. Once I'm good to go, I'll switch my shield mains into a tight circle formation. This formation isn't about protecting me though, it's a setup for the charge I'm about to order. The tight formation allows for a very powerful, concentrated charge. I can then give the order to attack at will, allowing my units to clean up the remainder of the enemy while I focus on the heroes. Mastering the use of orders and formations will give you much better control over your units and allow you to adapt to more situations. While you may find yourself sticking to mostly one formation, it's important to be flexible when in the heat of battle. Keep your units alive as best you can, and look for weaknesses in the enemy team's formations. 
If they are out of position or not set up properly, you can take advantage of that and hit them where it hurts. While ordering your troops around might seem straightforward, there is a lot to learn and improve upon. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more Conqueror's Blade content. I plan on putting out content weekly, so I'll see you in the next video.